This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season. The Farm Bill did not get passed last year. It received an extension. There are high hopes that the bill will be passed this year. To guide us through the politics is our guest, Harrison Weber, the executive director of the Red River Valley Sugar Beet Growers Association. Harrison, what needs to happen in order to strengthen the safety net for sugar? Yeah, I think uh, as, as part of this Farm Bill, sugar, along with all commodities, have, has been telling Congress we need to strengthen the safety net. And the, the safety net looks different for each commodity. When it comes to sugar, our safety net is our loan rate, uh, the sugar storage program, as well as some other technical changes in there. And, and what we're going to Congress and, and asking, like all of agriculture, is we need to strengthen that safety net. So we need to strengthen that loan rate. So in the unlikely event that sugar is forfeited, we have a base there to, to pick us up uh, for when things turn south. What kind of work has gone into this farm bill? Well, Bruce, over the last couple of years here, um, Republicans, Democrats, House, Senate alike have have really been out in the countryside hearing from producers and people that this truly impacts. You know, Chairman G.T. Thompson, I'm not sure how many field hearings he's had around the country, but it's been a lot. And he's done a, a great work in hearing from producers. Same thing with Chairwoman Debbie Stabenow hosting a number of field hearings. John Bozeman, Ranking Member uh, David Scott on the House side. They've been out and about hearing from us producers, hearing what we need, and they've heard us. The message is clear that we need to strengthen the farm safety net. Right now, how does the farm bill look in the House and Senate? Well, we're on uh, the first year of an extension here. Just three weeks ago, Chairman G.T. Thompson, the House Chairman of the Ag Committee, did release text and then it went into markup in the committee and Republicans and Democrats got to argue until I think one in the morning about the bill. They both presented their various amendments to the bill. That bill did pass out of the House committee with bipartisan support. And now it's sitting uh, waiting for its time on the entire House floor. On the flip side, uh, the Senate has been a little bit slower to move. Regardless, we're excited there is some activity just today uh, the ranking member, John Bozeman, came out with his framework for what he would like to see in the Senate version. And we we're, we're applaud him, and we're also excited to keep working with Chairwoman Debbie Stabenow to get a bill in front of the Senate committee and then ultimately get it out of committee and, and onto the floor. And then when both of those uh, chambers pass their respective bills, we'll see what differences there are. And if they have to go into conference committee, then that'll be our next step. But we're eager to keep that process moving and, and looking forward to passing a farm bill yet this year. So what's the holdup, Harrison? Why do you think the bill is moving so slowly? Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, like all legislation, there are very partisan issues that both parties have their priorities at. And there's a wide variety of them. You know, on one side, it may be some of the food programs. On the other side, it might be conservation. It might be how to pay for it, right? That might be an argument. Those are some of the issues that are generally holding up. I think Republicans, Democrats alike, urban, rural alike, all recognize the importance to have a strong farm bill for their constituents and for farmers, whether that be their urban grocery buyers or the rural food producers. I think both sides in urban and rural, they all recognize the importance to have a strong farm bill and a strong safety net. In the end, what's the farm bill going to cost the taxpayers? Yeah, great question. You know, we're proud to say in Sugar, all of our changes that we're going after is going to cost the U.S. taxpayer absolutely nothing. We have operated on a zero net cost to taxpayers 21 of the last 22 years, I believe. So we only had one year where it did cost taxpayers some money. And that was when Mexico unfairly dumped subsidized sugar onto our market. And so the changes that we're after to strengthen our version of the safety net is going to continue to operate at zero net cost to the taxpayer. And we're, we're very proud to say that. Thanks, Harrison. Our guest has been Harrison Weber, Executive Director of the Red River Valley Sugar Beet Growers Association. This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season.